is your favorite Malayalam actor? Okay, this is going to be kind of weird because it's not going to be like a main line like actor or actress. I have seen some Malayalam movies. And of course, I know that like, you know, Mohanlal and Manuti are king and everything like that. But my personal favorite that I enjoy a lot is actually... Hello, everyone. Thanks for watching today's video. Today, we have Chris with us. For those who don't know who Chris is, he is uh, someone who went from someone who is a, would you say, a, a normal guy uh, who loves to make videos uh, to finding sudden success overnight or uh, over week, maybe. Uh, he's had a big week. Uh, when I saw his profile, he had around uh, 1,000 followers. Uh, and as of making this video, he has uh, almost 9,100 followers, uh, 9,097 to be exact. So I'll, I'll update it at the end of the video and see if that's changed much. Um, so welcome, Chris, to the channel. Uh, would you like to give a quick intro to yourself? Sure. Thanks, Alan, for having me. Uh, yeah, my name is Chris. I live in the United States. And uh, I suppose the to get right to it, you know, the quickest way to say it, uh, I'm in my late 20s. I'm working in medical IT. Uh, I also have background in uh, philosophy and theology and some of the liberal arts studies from college. Uh, so I'm kind of a mixed bag and uh, just a collection of odds and ends of hobbies and interests and general knowledge. So, uh, yeah, I'm then I suppose that's how we landed here. <laughs> yeah, a uh, very interesting mixed bag, uh, which we'll get into soon. So um, there are a few reasons I'm here talking to Chris today. We have uh, we have three things in common, actually. So uh, we both love making videos. Uh, we're both part of the Jesus Youth Movement uh, and we both speak Malayalam. Uh, so you heard that right. Chris has learned and is learning one of the most difficult lang languages in the world and quite an obscure language as well. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people, even in India, don't know what Malayalam is or haven't heard, and they'd be like, what is Malayalam or where, where's Kerala exactly? Is it near the, yeah. Um, so the difference is uh, I didn't go viral for speaking Malayalam, so there's a, a small difference there. Um, so let's start off with the Anna in the room, uh, is that you speak uh, Malayalam. So what made you first start learning Malayalam? Like, what was your inspiration to get into it? I've just always loved learning languages. I've loved connecting with different cultures and different peoples. And um, I've just happened to live among many, many Malayali people for the last seven or so years of my life. And basically I made a video just talking Malayalam and making some jokes and memes about the culture. And it took off far more than I ever thought it would. Um, so yeah, I think all of Kerala now <laughs> knows I exist and um, just kind of taking it in for now, uh, seeing what will come of it. But yeah, happy to be here and, and talk a little bit and just and share this time. I think the way it started was probably about seven or so years back. Uh, basically, uh, around that time in my life, uh, as you mentioned, uh, the Jesus Youth Movement, and, and of course, the, the wider uh, Malayali diaspora in the United States, uh, which is relatively large compared to uh, certain other parts of the world, at least. Basically, over time, uh, people started to become friends and acquaintances and eventually just like second family. One thing I'll say right up front, though, is that, you know, I never felt any pressure or no one ever said like, oh, you should learn Malayalam or have you tried learning Malayalam or anything like that. But for me, learning language comes very uh, easily. Like, I think it's just something that I've been blessed with. And so I felt it was an opportunity really to just connect with people that I cared a lot about. and. Um, so they were kind of even reluctant at first because they didn't want me to feel like I had to somehow like fit in or, or something like that. But I just kind of pushed it a little bit and was like, no, 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 like practice with me, practice with me, it'll be fun. And uh, so there are some um, Chechis and Chetans, um, really more like aunties and uncles, I guess, in, in some cases uh, that I lived around and spent a lot of time with. And we just, I, I would just do it as a joke and kind of practice. And then it really took off from there. Um, so I have an interest in linguistics in general. And so I, uh, found like after much digging, I found some resources online that I was able to make use of. And I started like picking things out and putting them together. And, uh, I even made my own like short form grammar guide for learning Malayalam for myself. There's like a little Google doc hidden away on my drive somewhere. Um, and I would kind of reference that and I picked up some of the more technical aspects. 
Uh, I wouldn't say I have the greatest ear, but, you know, I can survive my way through, um, well, let's just say I can survive my way through the airport and the kitchen and, you know, your basic, basic environments. So basically, you can land in Kerala, navigate your way around, get into a taxi, get to someone's house, and then navigate the way around someone trying to feed you, basically. <laughs> yeah, and and maybe uh, maybe throw in a few little jokes here and there. And like also you, just float, float some basic conversation, maybe. I have to say your Malayalam is really good. Like when you said the word Malayalam itself, I knew you learned how to say it. Because I think a lot of the people that say Malayalam say Malayalam. But Malayalam. You said Malay- yeah, and you said Malayalam, and I was like, oh, you got the la sound there, uh, which is tough to do because your tongue has to twist in certain ways to speak Malayalam. Um, but yeah. So could you talk a bit about the video you made that went viral? Like, what were your thoughts before and after the video got a ton of views? The people have spoken and they want more Malayalam. So I present to you survival Malayalam as taught by a foreigner, a.k.a. Smatbaf. So perhaps one of the most common and important words you'll need to know is chedan or chechi, which just means big brother or big sister, unless you're in public and at the airport, in which case cheta means basically taxi driver. Hello, hello, hey, cheta, 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 cheta. Next we have venam and venda. Malus don't say please and thank you, so we have I want and I don't want. For example, But if you're visiting your amachi, then venda only means don't want after the third time saying it. Yeah, I guess the train of thought for the whole thing was just, uh, you know, people have known me in my community for a long time. It's just our our white friend who knows Malayalam. So I thought I'd make a video just to joke about it. And then uh, it got shared a lot more than I thought it would. And um, I remember going to bed one night and it was around like 10,000 views. And I was like, wow, that's pretty crazy. What's going on there? And I woke up the next morning and it was 20,000. And I was like, Oh gosh, <laughs> like I think I think it's going viral. Um, so the first day I, I felt a little bit overwhelmed, uh, and that was something I needed to wrestle with a little bit. Um, now I think I'm much more accepting and just understanding that you know I'm just gonna see where this goes and whatever happens, I trust that it'll work out for the best in the end. Um, and yeah, just been trying to keep up with all the people reaching out and and just sharing as much as I'm able to, as best as I can. Um, so it's a bit of a wild ride uh, and it's not over yet. Uh, it seems like it's only growing. <laughs> yeah, of course. What what's what are you at now? I think uh, if I'm looking at the right video, it's like 870,000 views or something. Yep. Yeah, I, oh, I remember I, seeing that. So we'll we, probably we, break we, a million we you before you hit a million, basically. <laughs> yeah, right on the cusp. <laughs> wow. Um, so has your uh, I mean, I guess it, it, it's been not enough time for you to decide this, but has your life changed in any way as a result of this video kind of blowing up? Yeah, I don't think I know yet how my life will change or if my life will change substantially. I just know that I'm sharing what I enjoy. I wasn't doing it for attention to begin with. And really, it was just to have fun with the people that I know and care about. So, um, you know, there's no motive here. <laughs> it's just now just figuring no, no, out what to motive. do with it yeah yeah exactly <laughs> just figuring out what to do with it really i mean I'll, I'll i can say the this part on the record like later on but you know i'm not trying to build a brand here it's just me just sharing myself and and seeing where that goes i guess so Absolutely. yeah um cool so what do you like about kerala culture and what do you find different uh that stands out to you compared to american culture it's interesting, actually, because I, before getting to know any Malayali people or really engaging in that world, like I had a lot of interest in Asian culture in general. So I connected with like cultures like Japan or Korea and stuff like that. And then I noticed some similarities actually overlap from there. And like one of the big things that you see is just like there's a very strong like social bond. <laughs> Um, and sometimes, you know, at the expense of individuality, which is very different from America. Um, but I also really um, am impressed with the values of like family and community that you see in the culture of Kerala, as well as like certain other cultures in Asia. Um, there's also just like a real culture of like warm hospitality, which is actually a little bit hard for me to grasp. So uh, 
one time I, when I was visiting in Kerala, I just remembered um, a family which definitely did not have as much as I did, was like so generous in their time and, you know, what they gave to me. And they even like, they even bought me a munda, <laughs> which is just like so thoughtful of them. But I was like, I can't take this. Let me pay for it, you know. But they said like, this is just how we treat family. Like this is how, you know, like once you're in, once you're in, you're in. And I think that was just something that was very different from in general, what you see in American culture where, you know, people are very driven to kind of branch out and explore and find themselves and stuff like that. That has, a, that has a positive side too, but it also can weaken some of those social bonds. So to see such strong bonds, that was something that um, was beautiful and really helped me at an important time in my life also when I needed those strong connections. And you've been to Kerala before, is that right? Yep, yep. Um, and hopefully not the last time. Hopefully get to go back. Definitely not. I think I think you'll get some like diplomat visa for 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 just <laughs> Kerala and other lands coming. Um, how did you? When the first time you arrived in Kerala was there? Well, was it after you had kind of progressed a bit in learning Malayalam? And was there any sort of shock that came from arriving in Kerala the first time? Yeah, I had learned a little bit of Malayalam. I was just getting more familiar with the writing, actually, because I knew I was going to be needing to read a lot of signs when I was there. Um, so I was getting a little bit warmed up to it. And the first time I visited actually was in 2019. It was December 2019, which was right before um, that big thing that happened in 2020. <laughs> uh, so it was an interesting time. <laughs> yeah. Um, and there were... I think I just got the full Kerala experience. I never stayed in a hotel. I always stayed with friends or friends of friends. And I think just kind of had a wild adventure for the whole time I was there. Even like there was even a protest that was happening at one point, like during that time. So the full Kerala experience, there was protests, there was like there was rain, there was mosquitoes. Um, although actually I'll say the mosquitoes didn't really bother me because... Um, wow. Yeah, it, well, I mean, for one, it was December, but also I, I don't think the mosquitoes there like foreign food much. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that you that is the full Kerala experience. You got strikes, you got rain, you got mosquitoes. That's, uh, yeah, quintessential <laughs> Kerala. Um, so you said you figured out a way to learn uh, Malayalam. So um, well, I've seen some of the resources that are online. They're not great for learning Malayalam. Some of the words are just explained in a very strange way. So um, what would you recommend to someone who doesn't know any Malayalam at all, but wants to learn? Like what uh, what were some kind of learning tricks that you used? Well, I kind of was actually drawing on previous language learning experience. So the language I know best besides English is actually Spanish. I know Spanish pretty fluently. And uh, I remembered thinking back to how like the textbooks taught me when I was learning other languages like Spanish and stuff like that. And I try to progress systematically. Uh, I wouldn't recommend this to other people, but it was kind of my way of sorting the ideas out in my mind. But I think one thing that very practically helped me from like drawing those from those that, but I think one thing that very practically helped me drawing from those previous experiences was knowing how to engage in like everyday circumstances. So again, like the people I knew and I was spending my time with, um, you know, a lot of times we were doing things around the house or doing groceries or, you know, we were cooking something in the kitchen. And that was such a great natural opportunity to just put the Malayalam into practice because, you know, someone's holding a hot pot, someone needs the knife, like you have to kind of know what you're doing. And I did it consciously. Again, this was never something that was um, pressed upon me. And I think that also made a big difference too. I think that part of the reason why many like second generation migrant uh, people in the Malayalam community just around the world, like why they struggle with Malayalam so much is because it's not something that they have such an interest in. And and that's okay. I actually am okay with that. If someone doesn't want to learn, I don't think they should have to. But when you have the interest and you like make that conscious effort, like you just jump like by leaps and bounds, like just exponentially learn faster. So that really helps. Definitely. I think that's a really good point that when you actually practically or basically when you try to learn a language practically it helps a lot more than i think going uh like going into like a grammar book and trying to figure out okay these are all the tenses and these how we do it because then 
I guess when it goes too much into logic, you learn a lot of stuff that you might not actually need in daily life. Um, yeah, yeah. And it can be helpful. The grammar, the, that grammatical, structural, technical yeah. side, like it, it is helpful, but like you have to know how to balance it and apply it to everyday living, basically. And in the beginning, you're never going to refer to that stuff very much anyway. You're just thinking of how to survive the next conversation. <laughs> is it right that so you you know how to read and write Malayalam? Is that correct? Somewhat. I, I would say I could type Malayalam. I don't think okay. I have the, the alphabet like locked in my brain, but um, but I can somewhat read it, somewhat um, that can follow is along. Amazing. There's a there's a lot of people, like you said, like second generation migrants who don't know how to read or write Malayalam. They know how to speak it fluently, but then the the reading and writing just didn't just didn't get to that stage. So you're you're doing pretty, pretty well. <laughs> I was uh, Malayalam's a lot of this. It's a the words are all kind of like little squiggles. So, yeah, it can be also like a word is like one big letter almost it's like. a Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, just when you said uh, you knew Spanish as well fluently, I was I was actually thinking of something. So uh, the word for table in Spanish is almost the same as the word for table in Malayalam, uh, like uh, mesa. mesa. Mm -hmm. Mesha in Malayalam it sounds very similar. Uh, yep. and, I think, and, and that's uh, the Portuguese influence. Yeah, of course. And then uh, I think for, well, actually, this is slightly different, but I, I guess lemon is naranja in, in Malayalam, but orange, I think, is naranja in Spanish. Is that correct? Yep, that's right. Yeah, and in <laughs> Portuguese as well, it's similar to that. Um, yeah, you, you catch some of those Portuguese influence words in there now and again. You'll hear like casera, that's like another one, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. And um, although I will say, like, just to Malayalam's credit, English is very adaptable and we borrow words from everywhere. And there is exactly one Malayalam word that I know of, at least, that has entered into the English language, um, okay. which is jackfruit. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What happened was when the Portuguese voyagers came to Kerala and the locals called the fruit um, chaka. They were mm. like, oh, OK, it's Jaca Fruta. That's what they called it in Portuguese. And I came right. to English as Jackfruit. So we got one word um, in English from Malayalam. That is very good trivia, actually. I'll, I'll, I'll keep that in mind when I'm like, well, actually, our language. Is <laughs> <laughs> um, great. Um, has this ever happened to you? Has there ever been a situation where uh, someone didn't realize you knew Malayalam uh, and they said something in front of you and then you were in your mind like, I understand what they're saying, but then they weren't aware. Never in a bad way. It was never like something uh, like awkward or, you know, anything like that. Um, but I can think of some circumstances where, um, for instance, like a couple of aunties might be talking and saying like, oh, we're going to go take the van here and then we'll meet you there later. And like they'll say it in Malayalam uh, or something like that. Right. And. I would just respond, usually in English, I would just respond like, oh, okay, well, we'll catch you over there then. And then I'd be like, eh? <laughs> and, <laughs> That's and, the most my learning A I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> That's always a great moment. <laughs> wow. That was great. Um, okay, this one will be, might be controversial. Who is your favorite Malayalam actor? Okay, this is going to be kind of weird because it's not going to be like a main line like actor or actress. I have seen some Malayalam movies. And of course, I know that like, you know, Mohanlal and Manuti are king and everything like that. But my personal favorite that I enjoy a lot is actually Kenny Sebastian, who's a comedian. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like, I know that's like such an odd answer, but like, I actually learned so many jokes like related to just making Chaya just from like watching Kenny Sebastian. And because I make Chaya a lot, and like when I heard his thing, it was like one of the first things that, that was like very specifically like Malu that I could just like fully connect with. I was like, oh, I've had to do that making the Chaya. I know exactly what he's talking about. So yeah, because of Chaya time with Kenny Sebastian, I think he became my favorite actor. <laughs> if we can call him an actor, he's really a comedian, but like, yeah. yeah. I think uh, that, that could work. <laughs> um, have you watched Malayalam movies? Do you have a favorite Malayalam movie? Uh, my favorite Malayalam movie would probably be Kumulangi Nights. Um, wow. Yeah, I, I really enjoy it. It's I, I've seen some others, but I probably couldn't think of some off the top of my head. But uh, but I, I have seen some others, I promise. Um, but Kumulangi Nights is probably my favorite. I, I enjoy that movie. I'll, I'll give you some suggestions after this um, 
and yeah, you could check it out if you haven't seen them. Uh, sure. Be interesting to see your review of some of these. Um, cool. What is your favorite dish from Kerala? Ooh, that's a hard one. Um, <laughs> okay. Well, let me start at least with some dishes I eat more frequently, <laughs> and, you know, that are just Kerala cooking. So like we got, we got mean curry, we got, um, I mean, appam and idli and sambar and I mean, there's dosha, there's, oh, I love bonda. Um, man, it's like, how do you pick from that? Yeah, I think like, I enjoy so many different kinds of Kerala foods. And I'm also someone who's very like open to trying new foods. So it's a little hard to pick just one. I think if it really, really came down to it, probably rotan beef is like an easy one to pick. I'd also put idli and sambar up there. Um, but I also really like kappa. So okay. um, yeah, I'm down for some good kappa. Uh, yeah, you should try uh, beef and kappa. It's like kappa and then kappa biryani. Kappa biryani, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Wow. No, I, I, I was not expect. With the I didn't expect you to say kappa. I thought you'd be like idli sambar, and I was like, okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I actually stayed with the family once where like the dad would just like loves kappa biryani, so we had a lot of kappa biryani when I was staying with them, and um, and I enjoyed that. <laughs> Great. Um, so you do talk about making chaya and liking chaya. Uh, I don't make chaya at all. I don't, I don't know how to, I couldn't figure it out. My wife loves chaya. Um, so what is your ideal chaya or how would your ideal chaya be made? And do you prefer to Western style tea if you have Western style tea? Um, I mean, I like, I like coffee and tea and I'm pretty flexible with my tea, but when I want chaya, it's something very specific in my mind, you know? Um, and it's funny because I made another video on my account just like talking about like some of the laws of making chaya that I just feel I've picked up along the way. So in my mind, like the perfect ratio for chaya is like one to one milk and water. You got to use whole milk. I mean, maybe you could use skim milk. Um, no, I take that back. You should never use skim milk, actually. <laughs> that's just like that's just water and water at that point. Um, you sensed all the Malayali disappointment and you're like, no, 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 <laughs> I take it back. <laughs> Well, no, it's like, no, don't use skim milk, only use whole milk, maybe use 2% milk. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think that for chaya podi, my personal like standard is red label because um, I think I like that really like, like red label has something in it. It's like a little more kaipa than like, than gold leaf, but gold leaf is very like smooth. So like in my mind, gold leaf is for like the special occasions, but red label is like my daily driver kind of chaya. I used to make chaya every afternoon pretty regularly, actually. So that's when I would wow. figure this out. And like, I prefer cardamom chaya like the most, but I've had different kinds like, you know, inji chaya or cardamom and ginger or like masala chaya. Like, so I've tried it different ways, um, wow. but cardamom chaya is my favorite. Um, how did you get into uh, Jesus Youth Movement? Um, so just for context, for those who don't know, uh, Jesus Youth is a Christian movement which started in Kerala. Um, but yeah, it stood out to me that you're part of it too. Yeah, I never expected I'd be part of it either because it happened by, it would seem like happy circumstance until hindsight. Um, uh, basically, I had some classmates who were involved in Jesus Youth and um, they, we kind of, we somewhat floated the same circles, but then some big event happened where a bunch of Jesus Youth people had come into town and basically like one of the families who lives locally just invited me to come over for dinner and i was like kind of nervous at first i'm coming from this like mindset of just like um you know how do i need to be formal do i need to like bring a dish or something like that and my classmate was part of jesus youth he was just like don't worry about it man it's like the most informal friendly place to you know you, you don't have to worry about anything and i said okay so i went and then when i went i met um another person in jesus youth um who she's one of the moms who lives in this area. And she, I would just say, I don't want to call her out because um, I don't want to embarrass her, but I'd say she's probably about 90% of the reason that I'm part of Jesus Youth because she just invited me back over and over and over again. And um, there was, of course, always food, but you know, we'd take time praying together. We'd 
um, just kind of share time together. And it was fun. It was good times. And they were very wholesome people. And being around families like that was something, again, that I really needed at that point in my life. And it was really something that helped me through a lot of difficult times in those years, too. So, I mean, I'm forever grateful. They really became my family. That's really wholesome. Really nice to hear as well. Um, were you always as close to your faith as you are now? Or was there any particular moment in your life that prompted you to be? Uh, I grew, so I grew up Catholic and I was really blessed to have faithful parents and like raised very well in the faith uh, because of them and their influence. So I'm very grateful for that. One thing though, and I mean, maybe it kind of gave away when I started talking about like the technicalities of Malayalam grammar, but you know, I'm a bit of like an intellectual and I've always leaned that way. So I learned so much about the faith very young and that really helped me when I was young. But one thing that I think was not so present was like that real like felt heart experience of just like meeting the Lord. And eventually that started to come as I got older, but then there were a few very key events, very different from each other, where like really I was like, like I really felt like I truly met the Lord. And I never doubted his presence, but like just had that real experience of him. Um, and probably the first major event like that that happened in my life was actually a silent retreat, um, which for context is a retreat where you're basically meditating on words from the scripture and taking silent time in prayer for several hours each day. And um, you have a retreat director who kind of helps guide you and move you along. Um, but, you know, there's no talking, no distractions. You don't use your phone. And in that environment of just silence and no distraction and kind of being away from all the busyness of life, the Lord just was like so clearly there. And um, and that just exploded my faith life. And then not long after that was actually the point where I first met Jesus Youth. So I was kind of coming in with some faith experience already. And when I saw these were other people who knew how to be, frankly, who knew how to be normal, but who also knew how to like live their faith in a really sincere way, that was so um inspiring to me like i wanted to live a life that was adventurous and i wanted to live a life that was fun but i also wanted to live a life that was like really committed to christ and i think that those previous experiences just were able to match up so nicely with the fellowship and the community and just all that good stuff that i was finding inside of jesus youth would you well now that you have uh let me see what the latest is. 9,115 followers on Instagram. Uh, would you want to use it to share your faith? Um, to, I guess, uh, yeah, share your faith so people know more about, I guess, uh, what your views are on the faith or kind of um, what your beliefs are? I think that I'm brought back to this conversation I had with a guy who actually used to work with working professionals who are Catholic, where, you know, a lot of times we talk about this idea of like balancing life, like I have to balance faith, I have to balance family, I have to balance work. But my feeling is that we, and I took, the, I got this inspiration from him. He said, you know, it's not about balancing, it's about integrating. And so for me, I think what I want is to be someone who is integral. I don't want there to feel like that I'm wearing, like, I don't, I don't want it to feel like I'm wearing the faith hat now I'm wearing the Malayalam hat. Now I'm wearing the whatever other hats there are. I want to just be the same person the whole way through. I want to be Chris. I want to be the person that God created me to be. And I really just want to share what I have to share. Um, so faith is obviously a tremendous part of that. But there's also so many other facets that come together with it. Um, like I like to I like to enjoy nature. I like to hike. I, I love to hike, actually. I've fallen in love with it in the last few years. Uh, done a lot of mountain hiking this year. So I love sharing stuff like that. Uh, and then, of course, I, you know, like every uh, guy in their 20s these days, like I basically live on the internet as well. So I love my memes. I love sharing funny stuff and making good content. And all that, I think, like comes together. Like it blends beautifully. I think this is like what is so unique about Catholicism is that we have this way of being whole in everything we do, where it's like you've got your mind, you have your body, you have your heart, 
it all comes together. And so, you know, when I think of what I want to do with this, this clout <laughs> that came all of a sudden, like, I don't want it to just be like, uh, okay, well, let me like build this brand and stuff like that. What I want it to be is just me sharing myself. And if more people enjoy that, then awesome. Like we'll, we'll make that journey together and see what comes. Well, when you were talking about the blend, I was like, you know, it's like making chaya, you know, you get the, the, the <laughs> a little masala. The, yeah. You have to find the balance between the water and the milk. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, cool. This is a cheeky question. So uh, if you don't want to answer, you don't have to. Uh, or if you want to skip through it, you can do that as well. Uh, now that you know Malayalam, would you marry a Malayali girl? Uh, actually, since the beginning, when I was learning Malayalam, people have brought that up it was just like like oh now you can get a malayali girl but for me that was never the motive actually that's not to say that i haven't dated malayali people it's just that it's i'm neutral about it to be honest <laughs> if, if a nice malayali girl comes away you know we'll make her a nice chaya <laughs> <laughs> there you go yeah no it's it's not it's not something that is like more or less in my mind it's just like again like the reason i learned malayalam was not really to do with that it was really more for the families and the friends that I was around. Like I wanted to connect with, with them. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's, there's no, there's no ulterior motive. I guess. Yeah. Well, I'll ask one final question, which is, uh, what's next for you? Mm. The, the most honest answer is I don't know. <laughs> and, and I'm okay with that. Like, I think that, with all this uh, new attention, I'm still figuring things out and and that's okay. For myself, like, hey, I still gotta work my day job. So I- <laughs> I'm I, gonna quit my job and enjoy this clout. <laughs> yeah, right? No, that'll last about three days. <laughs> and um, no, I, yeah, I still just go about my normal working life and do my best to make good use of, of all this and make plenty more memes and, just funny content for people to enjoy and hopefully share some more inspiring and profound and informative stuff along the way. I think that's Amazing. the simplest way to say it. Great. Uh, thanks so much for joining us today, Chris. We hope to see you on our channel again soon. Um, all the best with everything you're doing. Uh, God bless. Nandi and namaskar. And I'll just say, ah. Thank you. Ah, shady, ah, thank you. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, at, at a mancha? Is that what you mancha. said? Mancha. Yeah. Uh, that's kind of like, hey, bro. Like, I don't yes! know how to put it. <laughs> that's what I had in my mind. I was